Hello everyone and welcome to this week in stupid for the god knows what of October 2020. How are you all doing? Thank you for being here because uh, I want to share something very important with you. You see, I am excited because for the last four years, I was in various debates on internet forums and I was always asked, it's like, what do you mean fake gamer girl? Like, what is a fake gamer? What is the difference between a real gamer and a fake gamer? And finally, I have the answer. Like, this is going to blow your mind. This information right here is the perfect test that I have designed in order to make the difference between a fake gamer girl and an actual girl that plays video games. And I'm going to share this information with you for free. You don't have to pay anything for it. I will enlighten you. Are you ready? Okay, here is wisdom. An actual gamer girl is toxic because all gamers are toxic. If you show me a gamer that is not toxic, then that is a fake gamer. They do not play video games. And I have used this knowledge in order to answer another debate that is plaguing the internet right now. Are the Hololive girls, the anime avatars on YouTube, actual gamer girls or not? So applying this test, we can come to a conclusion. Roll the tape, please. Oh, I saw people saying uh, in chat that they thought I was gonna rage at this game, but I don't think so. I played this game so much that like, it's relaxing to play now. I don't really rage at CSGO anymore. A few minutes later. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Why would you throw a bomb at me? <laughs> We're gonna F. My team is very toxic. I want you guys to take the game seriously. Ugh. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, CSGO may not be the best the best streaming game. <laughs> This has to be the most relatable shit that I have seen on the internet in 2020. Am I the only one though? Am I the only one who miss seeing gamers being toxic? Because to me it used to be entertaining, now it's all about sanitizing esports and making sure that the mother is there in order to not have the streamer go with a potty mouth. And you know what's the most toxic thing of it all? Like, look here, Bigot. Let me, let me show you something. Because, you know, if, if I'm going to put this in This Week in Stupid, I'm going to give you some high-quality analysis that you are not going to find anywhere else. So, as she's walking along, right, like one of her teammates throws a flashbang. Like, you, you see where it's coming from. It's coming from the left, right? So, she gets another flashbang, but this one is from behind the corner. And I think it's Winnie the Pooh that throws the second one. So she takes it out on Ray. Like, Ray didn't do anything. He, he is not the guilty party here. He has been falsely accused. And, and this is what happens. Like, I want justice for Ray. Hashtag justice for Ray. Ray did not deserve this. Ray deserves better. But all jokes aside, uh, thanks to Brittany Venti, I have went down the... Hollow tube rabbit hole and now my recommendation is filled with anime girls uh, doing wholesome stuff and um, The problem is that when I showed it one this week is stupid. I got a lot of people wanting more and Then I had other people not wanting it at all. So what do I do now? I'm trapped between the hammer and an anvil. You, you need to understand I, I do not know 
if I should put more or less. So tell me in the comment section if you want the holotubers to go away from this week is stupid because uh, I don't know, I find them funny. But let's go into actual news, okay? Real important events from China. China. Do you know what China did? It changed the Bible story. Which Bible story, you may ask? Well, you know the one with Jesus that says, uh, let the person without guilt cast the first stone? Yeah, I mean, you can't really change something as popular like that because everyone knows it. So what they did was they added a little bit extra. They, they added further to the story. You see, apparently after Jesus saves the woman who committed adultery from getting stoned, he waited for the crowd to disappear, and then Jesus stoned the woman himself. So, so I'm reading this and I'm like, holy shit, you know, badass Jesus. Because I felt like uh, while well, reading the Bible, like stoning is a group activity, right? Like it's a collective effort. Uh, it's a way to socialize. Uh, but no, he did it by himself. I mean, that, that takes a lot of effort. Uh, so why did he do it? Well, apparently... He is saying, now we don't know if he said this while he was doing the stoning or afterwards, you know, like getting a towel and wiping the sweat off his forehead. But he explains, I too am a sinner. But if the law could only be executed by men without blemish, the law would be dead. You know, I bet if uh, CNN, Vice or BuzzFeed would have existed when uh, Asian Jesus did this. We would have seen articles like powerful message from Jesus. Powerful. You know, after Jesus did the deed, he said to the people that if only men without blemish would uh, come in. Huh? There's only one thing that I need to question. Like what one thing doesn't that up. Why did he tell the crowd to only have the person without the sin throw the stone then? Like, was he greedy? Did he want the adulteress all for himself? Like, what, what was the point of it all? If he thought that, no, it's, it's perfectly normal for people with sin to apply divine punishment, uh, then why did he tell them to disperse? This is what I don't understand. You know, maybe the textbooks are going to add this in uh, within the next variation. But uh, up until then, I'm uh, in a little bit of suspense. I'm curious to, to find out why. Okay, here's a fascinating story. Apparently, a cat woman model with thousands of shrimps has been jailed over a bizarre string of mass raids. This is a story of someone uh, taking the character a little bit too far. Now, if you are to actually read the title, you would think that she went like this when she burglarized, but uh, no, apparently not. Apparently, she was the getaway driver. She was sitting in the car, and when the people got in, she was like, vum, 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 vum. Uh, The second time she broke the law was uh, when she jumped bail. She didn't show up to court, which led to her second arrest. Now she might be facing two years in jail. So my first question is like, why is Australia having such hot mamacitas? Like since when? And the second question is, um, is this what a cat burglar looks like? And the answer is no. Pay attention to what I am describing. She was the getaway driver. She was aiding and abetting. She wasn't the cat burglar. Why aren't people paying attention? Honestly, you know, you show a picture of a pretty woman and then all of the men just, just lose focus. Lose focus. I, I bet like the female subscribers that are listening to this they're pointing out it's like oh no yeah v we know we know she's not the camera because they're paying attention they're not being distracted by this the issue of of waiters touching their masks and touching plates are you questioning no the, i think the, the masks efficacy are okay. of, of you have masks? to understand if you look i mean i have a mask right here i put a mask on you know when i think i need it tonight as an <laughs> example everybody's had a test and you've had social distancing and all of the things that you have to, but I Just wear like masks rallies. when needed, when needed, I wear masks. Okay, let me ask. I don't have, to, I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. <laughs> I Man, I love the American presidential debates. 
I think they are incredibly entertaining, very informative. I love watching them. There's just two issues with them, I understand. Uh, the first one is that the ratings weren't stellar. Not a lot of people felt like me. Not a lot of people wanted to see the presidential debates. And I think, you know, that should be fixed. I think uh, we need to get more people involved in the politics. Uh, and the second one is that they're not safe. There is the health hazard. You know, the U.S. president was actually sick back then. He was like a, a walking bioweapon. You know, spreading disease to everyone. Spreading the plague. So, I think I know how to fix it. I think I know how to bring more ratings. And at the same time, make them more safe. But no one wants to ask me. No one comes to my little table here, my little desk. Like, V, how can we fix it? Because I have solutions. Okay? Here's my solution. Make the debaters into VTubers. You would watch this. Admit it. Like, confess. Confess. If this was the, the presidential debate, you would watch it. Hell, I bet you might even vote for Joe Biden if this was the case. I, I would give you two reasons why you'd probably vote for Joe Biden if, if this is how it would look like. Can you imagine? No, seriously. No, just, just close your eyes a little bit and imagine. It would be the most entertaining thing in the world. Like, everyone would be glued to the television. But see, no one comes to me. No one comes to me and goes like, V, V, we have a problem. What, what, what's happening? We don't have ratings. Well, here's how you fix it. And after you make it really popular, after everyone watches, then you start selling merchandise. Then you start selling action figures. Oh, wait, no, somebody's already doing this. God damn it. What's my idea? What's my idea? Why are they muscling in on my legit business here? But yeah, no, like, uh, if, if you want to raise your kids properly, if you want to educate your kids, uh, you can choose to buy them a Dr. Anthony Fauci or a House Speaker Nancy Pelosi action figure. Uh, and then your kids can learn about safety and also about proper morality. I, got, I want one. I, I can't decide, though. Like, I, I'm not that wealthy. You guys don't give me enough super chats for this. Hashtag e begging, but like, seriously, five dollars a month. <clears throat> I feel bad for doing this, by the way. Like, I, I, I don't know how others can, can e beg without shame. I, I e beg with shame. Like, if someone asked me, how does we e beg with shame? But like, I can't decide which one would I get the Nancy Pelosi one or the Dr. Anthony Fauci. Like, on one hand, this teaches kids about responsibility, okay, and about safety, but on the other hand, this one teaches kids about morality. <clears throat> And, and progressive values. It's it's so difficult. Why can't Dr. Fauci be a little bit more progressive so I can get both in one? Hmm? Because here's what's happening when you don't give your kids a Dr. Fauci action figure. They end up growing up. They end up delving into the evils of capitalism. Like, heaven forbid, starting their own business. Horrible, I know. And then... They sell burgers four minutes after curfew. Like, what is wrong with them? You know, if they played with Dr. Fauci when they were a kid, they would know they're not allowed. And this is the actual explanation that they got. They said that they didn't know that it's four minutes after curfew. And the transaction has been made. A person requested a burger... And they gave it to the person after 10 p.m. Luckily, the police of vice and virtue of the Holy United Kingdom noticed this transgression. And they acted swiftly and allowed the full hammer of the law to fall upon them. And they got a fine, a 1,000 pound fine for breaking the laws. Hopefully, they will never break them again after this. And if they will, they should know that the cops are always watching. You think you might sneak in a little capitalist transaction after 10 p.m., but no. No, you're endangering the public. You're a menace. You know, I think 1,000 pounds is too less. Too l I think more should prison, jail time. This, this is what should happen to people who break the rules and endanger society. The cat is hiding. It is afraid. Because it is finally here. It has arrived. The Us Reaper.
But all jokes aside, it's a good sauce. You should try it. Like when your girlfriend asks you to wake her up for work, all you have to do is to put a tiny drop, no more, just a tiny drop on your finger. Then you finger her a little bit. And when she gets up and she's really mad and she's screaming, you're like, look, if you're awake enough to scream at me, you're awake enough to go to work. And now a message to my subscribers. Um, I would really appreciate it if you guys stop sending me on wild goose chases. Just stop wasting my time. Because a lot of you, a lot of you have said, V, talk about Obamagate. Talk about Obamagate. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Right? So, so I go on Twitter and I try to search. There is nothing. Okay? It's not, there is no scandal. It doesn't exist. Look, there are no results. Not even one. Not even one. What, what do you want me to talk about if it doesn't exist? Or maybe, maybe it could be protecting me. Oh, I see. No, maybe it does exist. Maybe it does exist. That, and you subscribers that want me to read about this, you want to put me in danger? You want to put me in danger? I need to thank Twitter. Again, I, I need to make a donation. I, I wish Twitter would have a PayPal or a Patreon or, or any way that I could donate money to them as a matter of gratitude that their trust and safety council is keeping me safe. I'm really curious though, like what is the turnover rate on the Trust and Safety Council at Twitter? Like, can you imagine working there and, and being exposed to, to the worst things of the internet, like Obama again? Like you're working there and it's your job and you have to read through it. Like what does that do to a person? How does that break a human psyche? You know, if you actually ever get to meet a person from Twitter's Trust and Safety Council in real life, you need to thank them for their service. You need to just get on your knees and kiss their feet because they keep you safe. They managed to get civilization to continue by censoring the dangerous information from the internet. Like, without them, without them, you wouldn't be what you are today. You would be in constant danger from the bad words that appear on your screen. So again, like if, if by any chance, if by any chance anyone from Twitter's Trust and Safety Council is listening to this from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for what it is you are doing. I, I, I worship and adore you. Please send me a picture so I can frame it and put it on the top of my bedroom wall so that every time I go to sleep, I can look at you and be like, oh, thank you, Twitter Trust and Service. Thank you for keeping me safe. Like, look, as an example, Sarah Hussein, right? She's on the Twitter, trust and safety. Like, without her, I wouldn't trust anyone on Twitter. I would feel unsafe. But because she is, I trust everyone from Twitter, and I feel very safe. Like, I kiss the ground that she walks on. I revert this person. She, she's like a beacon of light into my life. She's like Jesus Christ. You know, like, I, I just want to emulate her, to be like her. Because, look, she wants to abolish the cops. And I agree. Who needs police when you have people like her looking out for your safety? Why, why would you even need cops if you have Sarah Hussein never asleep, always vigilant, always making sure that the internet is a safe place, not just for you, but for your children as well. And, and look what a brave person she is. She is fighting not just against white supremacy, but brutal white supremacy. Would you be able to do that? Would you be able to tackle such a monster? I wouldn't. I wouldn't, but I don't have to. Why? Because Sarah Hussein is on the case. Look here. She's also fighting fascism. Man, if only we would have a time machine to send her back into Italy, none of the horrors of the World War II would exist because she would just defeat it. You know, but at least... You know, we can't do that, unfortunately, because the time machine isn't invented. But we know that there will be no more fascism anymore because she is on the case. So you need to be thankful. Like all of you that are listening to this, you're spoiled. You are such spoiled children because you do not realize how much gratitude you need to send towards the Trust and Safety Council at Twitter. Now, let me tell you a story from Russia. I don't think I ever covered stories from Russia in This Week in Stupid, right? So this is a first. If I have any Russian subscribers, pay attention. It's a beautiful story. It's about a cleaning lady. 
a lady that did the cleaning at City Hall. So um, this happens in a small village where the mayor was running unopposed. So he decided to fund some controlled opposition. He made the cleaning lady run against him so that, you know, the people have a choice, so that it looks at least like a normal election. It's like, oh, you, you got two candidates, right? So it's not just one candidate on the ballot. What if I were to tell you that the cleaning lady won? Yes, the Russian cleaner takes office after surprise election win. Look at this. Uh, a cleaner from a small Russian village has put away her brooms and became its reluctant leader after unexpectedly winning last month regional vote and overthrowing the pro-Kremlin incumbent. I didn't put myself forward, she says. The, the website called The Podium reports that her early interviews before going silent due to overwhelming national media attention, she became one of the most famous cleaning ladies in all of Russia. So uh, she didn't even campaign. Apparently she won in a landslide. And uh, people believe that this is because they voted against the mayor rather than for her. So yeah, now, now she's the mayor. Uh, and even the BBC talked about it. So, you know, congratulations for her. You know, girl power. You go, girl. Did you guys catch that? Did, did you manage to recognize that sound? If you said it's her smashing the keyboard against the desk, then you are absolutely wrong. Uh, it's very difficult. Try picking up the keyboard and smashing it against the desk in such rapid succession. No. See, you're inexperienced. You're not a real gamer. It's smashing the mouse against the desk. Because with the mouse, you can do it in rapid succession. If you answer this correctly, then congratulations, you are a real gamer. Anyway, enough with the nonsense, because uh, I got some great news. You will be happy to find out that in a very innovative approach, uh, Google has decided to step in as a company which decided to take a moral position and uh, created something new, something refreshing. It's called Respectful Code. Respectful code. Um, now, you thought that coding is respectful, but no, it's not. Because now it is more respectful. More respectful. By removing words that coders are allowed to use, coding has now become more respectful. So I would like to thank Google for making coding more respectful. Uh, some of the words that have been removed are white space, native, and the dreaded word, dare I say it, red line. So again, I, I don't know who at Google decided to do this, but um, you have my eternal gratitude. Because up until now, coding was just respectful, but now it's more respectful. Speaking of respect, this is why I love people from the left, because they want respect but they don't give it back. And this shows strength. Like a king, for example, or any member of the aristocrats when dealing with the peasantry. You're supposed to respect the aristocrat. You're supposed to respect the king. The king isn't supposed to respect you in return. And you're supposed to respect them simply for existing, not because they do something. And here you have AOC as a perfect example, okay? For the record, Mike Pence, it's congresswoman Ocasio Cortez to you, right? So she doesn't say, for the record, Vice President Mike Pence. No, because she doesn't need to respect him, okay? The respect is a one-way street. And this is what I love about the left. My God, it's, it's just beautiful. You know, like, I want to be in a position where other people respect me, but I don't have to respect them. But I, why, why do you have to respect them back? And this is what I don't understand. In a perfect society, I would be respected. And this is why I need to join the left. So, so I can be like Congresswoman Ocasio Cortez. Seeing as how we've got some time to kill, let's review some useful skills. Ground pound. Oh, be the queen, huh? 
To smash blocks or enemies below you or to flatten out bumps in the road. Nothing beats a ground pound. That's funny, because, uh... You guys know that's actually... What I did to your mom last night! <laughs> Look at this. Uh, California companies to be required to name minority LGBTQ leaders under Bill Hedig to do so. Um, legit question though. Like I'm not. I'm not even kidding. Is it performative? Like would they know that you're gay? I mean, would would they know that you take it up the tushy? H how does it work? Cause um. If I was in the position, you know, to, to, to be in line for a promotion, I think I'd take it. i take it up the tushy a little bit. You know, like, what if, what if you're uh, getting promoted in the position? Like, is it something you need to maintain? Like, do, do you need to remain gay for, for the duration? Like, it, it opens interesting predicaments. Um... What if, like, I would be, like, this, uh, incel of the gays? Like, I'm gay, but I just can't find the perfect boyfriend. You know, I'm, um, I'm searching for the true love. Uh, uh, no, seriously, like, is it performative? Like, do, do you have to frequent, like, establishments that uh, other LGBTQ people frequent? Or is it just, like, you identify as, and therefore you are promoted? Like... I, I would really love to discuss with some of the proponents of this bill because uh, I think the possibilities are endless. Um, but uh, yeah, if I was in California yeah, and someone asked, uh, definitely gay. Definitely. 100%. Very, very gay. I can name the Spice Girls gay. That's that's how gay I would be. You know, actually, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm such a lazy person that I don't like to work for the things I get. So what I would do is I would put the burden on my fiance. Well, next year she's going to be my wife. So I put the burden on my future wife for her to identify as a guy, okay? And then I'm in a relationship with a man and therefore I'm gay and problem solved. <claps> Boom, California, -nya! promotion incoming. Speaking of uh, LGBTQ, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Holy United Kingdom for a second. Apparently, there is a new faction within the Conservative Party, which has a very interesting uh, slogan. Uh, Conservatives for change. Like, think about that for a second. You know, conservative for change. Like, if you're conserving, it means preserving things, like your, your for tradition. So how can you be a conservative for change? I think it's like trying to emulate the Democratic Party, because if you look here... It's like uh, Boris Johnson looked at Joe Biden and said, can I copy your homework? And Joe Biden said, yeah, but change a few things here or there so the teacher doesn't notice. Like, look here, build back better. But hey, kudos for them, right? I mean, look, they're, they're trying to, to learn how to talk about race. Very progressive. Uh, one of them is even Corbynizing, I would say. Like, this, this guy is morphing into Genevieve Corbyn. Um, this is the perfect utopian society in my opinion where people do not have the choice between left and right anymore it's left or left there's only a correct answer no more bigotry no more racism no more nothing okay you just have conservative for change or progressives that's that's perfect oh my god i i, I changed my mind i don't want to move to japan anymore i want to move to the holy united kingdom you know what? As a leftist, I'll give the conservatives a uh, leg up. I'll, I'll help them. I'll help them. Even though I shouldn't. Because if you're good at something, you should charge money for it. You know, did they give me money for helping them? No, of course not. I have to beg for Super Chat. So, uh, in this case, I'll do an exception. I'll, I'll help them for free. Okay? This is how you talk about race. Pay attention. We protect. We protect. What do we protect? We what do we not touch without consent? They protest, they chant, but most importantly, they protect. Speaking of protesting, this is uh, what I love about democratic nations. That um, when something is bad, when something is wrong, if enough people go out and raise a stink about it, 
the problem gets fixed. And returning to the Holy United Kingdom, we notice that during this time, uh, they have rules in order to keep people safe and healthy during this deadly pandemic. And uh, there were a couple of incidents where people who broke the rules didn't get punished. So we have Stanley Johnson, we got Margaret Ferrier, and Jeremy Corbyn, who breached the rules regarding COVID, and there was no punishment. So people started complaining. You know, they did hashtags, they did activism, and they said enough is enough. If you breach the rules, the punishment needs to apply to you. Uh, and finally, we noticed that the government is taking this seriously uh, by arresting five welders who broke the rules. So, you know, I I'm glad to see that when people start complaining, Lady Justice wakes up from her slumber. Um, any Americanskis listening to this? Huh? Do I got any Americans in the chat? Do you guys remember the um, Kavanaugh saga? Were you entertained by it? I know I was. It was one of the most entertaining things on television. Um, did you want a sequel? Do you want a sequel for it? Because look at here, right? The Hill. Hundreds of law professors signs letter urging the Senate to reject Kavanaugh. And we got a sequel now. We got a sequel. Look here. Uh, over 1,500 from Amy Connie Barrett College signed letter of concern. 1,500 people are concerned. Um, it's interesting. Lovely. You know, we're, we're looking for a sequel. Usually the sequels aren't as good as the originals, but uh, hopefully this will uh, still be entertaining. What do you guys think? Finally, I would like to end this Weekend Stupid with a very interesting story. Do you guys know who Scaramucci is? Scaramucci. Scaramucci used to work at the White House for the Trump administration. Uh, until he was caught saying negative things about the president in a conversation he thought would be private. So he got fired. And ever since uh, he keeps going on CNN and other places, you know, he's a never Trumper, which is fine. You know, absolutely beautiful. You should be a never Trumper. Why, why should you be Trumper even once? But uh, the debate moderator, Steve Scully, which uh, is supposed to host the next presidential debates, apparently thought that he is DMing and instead uh, published this to the whole world to see, Scaramucci, should I respond to Trump? Good question. Um, <clears throat> you know, like, th this is what I like to see. Uh, people who do not think for themselves, but ask their betters for permission. Uh, this this is beautiful. Brings a tear to my eye. Now, uh, apparently, he claims that he got hacked. And this is the only thing that the hacker has sent. Right? So, a hacker managed to infiltrate Steve Scully's account and just tweeted this one thing. The only problem with this explanation is that Anthony Scaramucci responded and he said, ignore. He is having a hard enough time. Some more bad stuff about to go down. You know what I think? A lot of people say that uh, this was done by accident. Uh, no, I think they know that uh, the Trump era is over. America is now a decent society where everyone agrees that Trump is bad. Uh, so there is no problem if this conversation is being held in the open. Uh, and at the end of the day, like, isn't this better if you know how a moderator feels like before the debate? Like, you, you now know that the moderator is a good guy. Like, you, you know you're going to expect good things from him. So, uh, yeah, I mean, well, what's wrong with this? I, th I think it's excellent. I think it's great. I, I, I think they should have... More conversations in the open. Oh, and by the way, if someone, just just for the sake of the argument, let's say that there might be a right winger that would claim, oh, the moderators are biased. Oh, the moderators uh, are 
working against Trump. Just say it's a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory. Like, that. What do you think people conspire? You know? They're not conspiring. They're in the open. And if they claim they are, then they're like uh, fake news and then you can black, uh, block them and delete them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week is stupid. And uh, if you did, do me a solid. Like there, there's several solids that you can do for me, right? Like I, I entertained you. Uh, and, and if you liked the entertaining, now you can do something for me. Uh, for, for me. Uh, you could thumbs up the video if you liked it. Uh, and uh, you can share it around. Word of mouth really helps me out. The more people that see it, the, the better it is. For me, not for you, for me. Well, actually it is for you as well, because uh, then I can make uh, more interesting content, because I, I get energized. I get an unconscious bias that more people are watching. And, and if you really, really, really like this, you could either send a super chat, or if you want some buyer's remorse, uh, you can subscribe to my subscribe star. It's pinned in the first comment. Just scroll down and there's a link. You click. Even one dollar helps. Thank you all. I appreciate it. You are the best. I'm not even kidding. You are the best. Like without you, I would not be able to do this. And I really enjoy doing this. And I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care. You know what? You know what? You know what? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, let's read some super chat.